You've all been there. You sat on the plane, on the way to the runway, and you want to send a quick message or have one last catch up on your social media before you have to go completely cold and dark for hours. But then your friendly cabin crew member comes on the intercom and reminds you that all phones need to be put into airplane mode for takeoff and landing. But why? This is 2023 and you've got social media posts to catch up on. Let's take a look and find out why. Firstly, we need to understand how a phone communicates with the outside world. And this is done through a series of radio waves. You can imagine your phone as a little active radio transmitter and receiver. A signal or set of frequencies is sent out from your phone and this is picked up by a cell tower nearby and that's routed through a series of networks all the way to the destination. Such as your brother's phone as you tell him to enjoy work because you're off on your holidays and he's not. Your phone is also constantly trying to provide you with the very best connection, even when it's locked and in your pocket. It tries to connect you to the optimal cell tower in the area, and it takes a number of key factors into account, such as the frequency of the signal, the rated power of the transmitter, the weather conditions in the area, and the uplink and downlink data rate to ensure that when you need to use your phone, it's ready to go. So what is it that the airlines and aircraft manufacturers are particularly worried about? To put it simply, it's interference. Have you ever had your phone sat near a radio or set of speakers and you've heard this sound? That's your phone emitting electromagnetic interference. And just how this annoying sound can interrupt the belting chorus on an absolute banger, it can also disrupt the most important systems of an aircraft. Radio wave interference or electromagnetic interference is when the signal emitted by one device is unintentionally picked up or distorts another. This can cause disruption or noise on the receiving device or system which can affect the performance of the device or the sensor. It can also affect the way a device measures a signal as well and when that signal is disrupted or interfered with it can result in an incorrect reading uh, which you really don't want on a complex set of systems such as an aircraft. And it's also worth noting that interference is also more of a risk for older aircraft as well as not only do they have older technology on board but their shielding could have degraded over time unless it's been repaired in the past. As your phone is thousands of feet above the ground when you're flying it may also output a full power to try and connect you to the cell tower thousands of feet below which again increases the risks of interfering with an aircraft system on board and if you times this by a few hundred phones on board the plane at one time they're all trying to connect at once you can imagine the potential interference levels that could happen. Systems that aid aircraft in navigation such as the automatic landing systems and critical sensors are all being protected by these rules especially during the critical parts of flight such as takeoff and landing. Cabin crew intercoms have also been reported to have been disrupted by mobile phones which of course is not ideal if they're trying to communicate with each other during an emergency for example. However, technology certainly moved on a lot and the systems and electronics in modern aircraft have got a lot of protection and are shielded against this type of interference. Some of the critical sensors and systems on an aircraft rely on radio waves and this is why although a study by the FAA in 2012 concluded that there have been no confirmed occurrences of cell phones affecting flight safety, it's simply just not worth the risk. However, following this report, fairly recently there's been instances of interference that have been linked to more modern technology. With the introduction of 5G on modern devices, the frequencies used specifically on the 5G band C network come very close to some of the reserve frequencies protected by the aviation sector. This has become a problem in the US in 2022 as the FAA believe that these frequencies cause roughly 80 instances of interferences with key aircraft systems during the final stages of flight and these mainly have been affecting the radio altimeters. 500. Radio altimeters work in the final stages of flight to aid the pilots and aircraft in avoiding terrain usually within the last 2500 feet of the approach. Although they are not the only source of altitude references they play a key role in their situational awareness and they were involved in providing key data to the aircraft's autopilot systems. Without these functioning, Autoland systems will not be able to work as the autopilot cannot calculate how high the aircraft is above the ground in relation to what's called the decision height. This is the height at which a pilot needs to be able to see the runway to land safely and this is entered into the flight computer when planning the approach. If you cannot see the runway at the decision height, you have to go around and try again. This is usually an issue during bad weather or fog and decision heights vary based on the airport and the aircraft capability as well. Simply put, radio altimeters work by emitting a beam of radio energy from below the aircraft down to the ground and this system measures how long it takes for the reflections to come back 
along with more in-depth calculations around the change in phase, for example, of the returning signal. This is then calculated and an altitude above terrain is presented to the systems. Following these issues, the FAA continues to work closely with providers to limit the number of 5G towers close to the major runways, and they've also advised that they want them to reduce the power output on the existing towers so that they don't become a problem in these areas. This was not really a concern in the UK as we operate on a different 5G band. Aircraft manufacturers are also trying to mitigate these risks by connecting their passengers' phones via satellites when on board. Modern aircraft now also include SATCOM or satellite communication systems. You may see these yourself as when you see the aircraft they're a hump on the back of the fuselage. This houses the unit that communicates with the satellites to provide the likes of in-flight entertainment and internet access on board the flight, whilst apparently blocking the phone's connection to the ground cell towers. In fact, many airlines these days even offer Wi-Fi as an onboard service, and although it can still be awfully slow in some cases, like the days of painfully downloading a JPEG image while your mum moans at you for disconnecting the phone while you surf the net, it's still certainly better than no signal at all. In fact, some airlines like JetBlue offer high speed internet while at cruise altitude, which is even good enough to stream 4K video, just like the high quality content here on the airliner's lounge. Or even watch a 4K live plane spotting stream on uh, someone like airliner's live, for example. That is unbelievable. The noise. Latvian flag carrier Air Baltic, with their fleet of stunning Airbus A220s, might I add, are in the process of using SpaceX's Star Starlink satellite based internet which is to be fitted on the entire fleet of aircraft and as a Starlink uses ourselves I can tell you it's pretty damn good. But is there another aspect to this that has absolutely nothing to do with tech at all? Absolutely. How many times have you been typing away on your mobile phone and you've completely missed what your partner just asked you to do? And of course you don't want to admit it so you just give it your best guess and you're nearly always wrong. Phones these days are packed full of apps to distract us. These take your focus away from the world around you and they draw you into the device. And when you add things like headphones and music into the mix, this could cause you to miss that all important safety demo or even a critical announcement that the crew join an emergency. During takeoff and landing, this is a critical stage of flight and this is where you are likely to encounter an issue if one was to arise. At this time, the passengers are expected to be fully aware of their surroundings and not distracted. So asking them to close down electronic devices makes perfect sense here. This is also why you're expected to be awake during takeoff and landing and the crew may come round and wake you up to make sure that you're completely alert. And as for crews, don't worry. YouTube Premium lets you download all of the airliner's lounge videos to binge on in flight and you can even download Netflix and Amazon Prime videos as well. But there you have it guys, that's why we still have airplane mode. What do you think in the chat? Do you mind not having your phone for the few hours while you're flying? Can you not bear to be without it for that time? Let us know in the comments below and we'll catch you on the next one.